If you learned Adobe Premiere Pro and want to start using DaVinci Resolve, this is the video for you. Okay, I use and love Adobe Premiere Pro, but maybe you've heard a lot of creators saying I'm using DaVinci Resolve. What's the hype about and how can I easily make the switch? Watch this video and you'll learn. So uh, here we are in the DaVinci Resolve workspace. I've got an entitled project. I can create a new one if I want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. I'm gonna open it up, there's nothing in it. And then we go from left to right, as you can see. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is very certain. It wants you to do things in a certain order and only the order it suggests. So no moving around windows and workspaces like you can in print. Premiere, you have to go from left to right, from media import to delivery. So I'm gonna import some media. I'm gonna drag and drop a video file, change the frame rate to match, obviously. Uh, I could browse through my hard drives here and bring it all in seamlessly through the interface. So there's my video. I can scrub over it, see it, hear it, that's great. And then I can start cutting it. So let's import it here and I get a timeline, similar to a sequence in Adobe Premiere Pro. And if I want to cut, super simple to do that. And then if I want to make some snippy snips, I can obviously move along, zoom along to an area where I might want to make that snip. So let's see, maybe along here, I might want to make a snip and I can use the scissor icon for that. Uh, and then of course I can sort of budge things up and notice how it like crosses things over like that. So it's really easy to make jump cuts and bits like that, move things around to where you'd like them to be. So all very intuitive, make your cuts first, then you can go ahead and do edits. Now over here, this is like working in the, the sort of main screen of Adobe Premiere Pro. I can see video, I can see audio, I can duplicate things to be on multiple tracks by holding down Alt and dragging that up to video track two, and I can do things, but there's no need to do separate layers because all of that comes later in fusion mode. So let's undo that and let's just focus on making cuts. Now it's very easy to do. Uh, by default, we've got this one selected right here which is the selection mode, which is usually V on your keyboard in Premiere. It's A over here in DaVinci Resolve. And then cutting, which is intuitively C in Premiere, is the blade edit mode in DaVinci Resolve, so it's B. So if I wanna make a load of chops here, I can do so. I can make some edits here and here and like cut down the video to size, move things around on the screen, overlay things on different video tracks if I need. And again, A to get back to my overall screen and I can just move this around seamlessly. I've got snapping mode as well, which is super helpful. So all pretty straightforward there. If I wanna go ahead and add text onto my screen, usually we'd use the essential graphics panel in Premiere Pro over here, you just pop open effects and you look for titles down here. And here we've got all kinds of stuff here. Let's stick with a scroll title to start. And uh, it's very simple to get it in. And we'll just call this Mike in Barcelona, like so. And then rewind to the start, hit play. That's spacebar. MWC 2023 in Barcelona. Pretty easy and pretty easy to change things. So I can change the font if I want to be anything else and I can see that update in real time. I can make it bigger, oh, much bigger. That's huge. Uh, that'll do, that's nice. I can change the color of it if that's a bit clashy. So let's make that red and click okay. And I can even go ahead to video transitions and I can do some nice little uh, additive dissolves. It's actually showing me what, what the effect is gonna be in real time. So that's quite cool. Rather than having to drag and drop it, I can do that instantly. We've got X wipes and things like that. Uh, we've got drop warps. Oh my goodness, that's a weird one. Let's put that one on the end of my MWC text. 2023 in Barcelona. That was fantastic. AR. There you go, it kind of drop warps out of the screen, which is great. Uh, so that's all good. And then Fusion is where it gets very complicated. In Premiere Pro, we're used to dragging in adjustment layers and changing those adjustment layers. Here, it works a little bit differently. So we can choose anything we'd like here from changing the background to adding a bit of noise, to painting on the screen, to color correcting. But don't worry about color correcting. That all comes later. We can add in something like a blur if we want. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. There's masking layers, everything. Okay, so I want to add a simple blur. Uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in the blur like so. I'm also gonna add in a rectangle which applies to the blur. And then I can move this around and resize it. So say I wanted to blur out that banner up there or the, the sponsor maybe on that banner so it's it's not showing inside my video. Select the rectangle and then we just need to take it so the input of the video goes into the blur. 
and the output of the blur goes out like so. And then we can select the blur and increase the blur size. And boom, look at that. Uh, depending on how much we want to blur it, you can blur it a lot or a little bit like that. You have blurred out a banner. So that's how you do things. No adjustment layers, no masks. It's all done inside Fusion, which works on a node principle. So the more nodes you create, the more you can do. And arguably, this could be more powerful than adding adjustment layer after adjustment layer in Adobe Premiere Pro. Color is really easy. Again, there's a dedicated workspace inside Premiere. Uh, so is there here in DaVinci Resolve. So it's pretty easy to go ahead and make changes to all of these different color wheels to get exactly the kind of color you're looking for. Now, I'm no color expert, but I can see just by tweaking these wheels around just a little bit, I can get a color that already starts to look pretty decent and pretty lifelike, much better actually than what I started with. You can also go ahead and make adjustments here to change the shadows and the highlights and things like that and really get a good look to my video. So this is showing me exactly how things look and I'm pretty happy with the result that I've got in no time at all. Next, we move on to audio. Now, usually you'd go to the audio workspace and you'd use the very easy essential sound panel inside Premiere Pro. Over here, it's Fairlight. And again, you can see your audio. You can make this audio screen bigger and all your audio tracks so you can see the waveforms, which is super important. You can go ahead and add in effects. Now, if we just want to apply everything on one track, I might actually bump this audio track back to track one, and then every effect I put on will be impacted here. So let's first of all go in and we'll go to the restoration area and add in noise reduction. And here it's going to add some basic noise reduction. WC 2023 in it's actually rolled off a load of the low end, so I don't really like that. Let's go for D rumble. Let's start with D rumble. Try that. MWC 2023. In Maybe a bit of D hiss. In Barcelona, that was fantastic. AI was a big topic. Now, in, in truth, I could probably roll that threshold off to make it not sound so um, so much of a roll off on my quality of my voice there. And the fact that it's not going to replace humans. In fact, human experts will be more important than ever before as we try to navigate what's real and not Okay, real. I'm switching that on and off as I play back, and I'm actually not really liking what I'm guessing from the noise reduction effect here. Uh, with just a few clicks in DaVinci Resolve, I find it far easier to set up in Premiere Pro. One of the things I do like is the ability to add dynamics and EQ really quickly here. So double click, if you know what you're doing with dynamics, that's pretty easy to use. And again, if you know how to set up a parametric equalizer, you can do this, or you can bring in some of their presets, and they do have female and male lav mic fixers and finishers, which can be really super helpful. But I gotta say, if I wanna go into effects, one of the effects I might use more on this track is the dialogue processor, and it has a little bit of everything to clean up my track. MWC 2023 in Barcelona. So I can choose frequencies that I'm rolling off, D-pop, D-S, I've got compression, and everything is one easy interface for me to use, rather than having to go through and add in multiple effects, one after the other after the other. Uh, this dialogue processor actually seems really good and really straightforward to dial in. If you know things like your thresholds and amounts you want to add, you've got level meters here. That was fantastic. To see how much the compressor is going. Compressor? Compressor. To see how much the compressor is going in. Uh, but frankly, I, I gotta say, it's a little less intuitive to set up the audio in Fairlight as compared to Adobe Premiere Pro in addition to using Adobe Audition and the powerful noise reduction features there. But with a little bit of time, you could definitely dial in a few effects, dial in dynamics, EQ, and have a really good sounding track. And then to deliver much the same as the export feature in Premiere Pro, you can go over here, gives you your final project here. Of course, you can go for the H.264 master preset. You can go H.265 if you want that. You can go for ProRes as well. So there are some presets here, um, but really what I'd like to see in the future are some YouTube presets, some Facebook presets, some Twitter presets. I feel like I might need to select a little bit more like encoding profiles and uh, restricting to certain kilobits per second for upload to YouTube. And I don't know all of those things off by heart, but if I want a basic H.264 master, I'd select that preset and then I would just simply start to render it out by either adding it to my render queue like that or clicking render queue up here and having a look at what gets exported. So add to the render queue, save it, and then render all over here in the render queue, and off it goes. It starts rendering out my project 
pretty quickly, I think you'll agree, that's one of the benefits of DaVinci Resolve, is it gets things done super quick, might be a bit slower on some of the effects and transitions than if you've got heavy audio effects going on. But as you can see, going from left to right as a workflow is pretty straightforward when you get used to it. Make sure you understand that instead of adjustment layers, you're gonna be using nodes in the future. Understand that some of the audio effects may not be quite as advanced as Adobe Premiere Pro and Audition, but then perhaps it's just time to pay that one-off fee for the studio version of DaVinci Resolve and you can get more interesting audio effects like vocal isolation uh, and others, I'm sure. So definitely a good way to get started. Making the transition, you will need to learn a whole load of new shortcuts like, for instance, B for cutting instead of C and A instead of V to go back to your selection tool. Uh, but let me know, how are you getting on? Are you making the switch? Switch. Are there any sort of hurdles that you're facing? I would love to know from you in the comments down below.